All right, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, who whose voice was that? Sorry, it's Aaliyah. Oh, hi, Aaliyah. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Yeah. Are you uh, in the meeting room? I'm not. Um, I believe Tom should be working on setting things up. Yes. Um, yeah, she's there. She just let me know that um, apparently Alan is sick. Um, and so we may not have a quorum for the meeting. Um. Um, I'm wondering if, because I, there was a little bit of confusion about whether it should have been at 11 or 1130 this week. Um, so I'm wondering if, even if we get to 1130, will we still not have a quorum or is there a possibility that, that someone that will still have six members? Hmm. Um, yeah, I do know. I do know that the Office of Human Rights um, requested that or mentioned that they had a meeting this morning that could run over and requested that we push it to eleven thirty. Right. So that would be. So if myself, Tracy, and Zach are there, and then Larry's late. Uh, but he's there. We would just need Jennifer and Jonathan, right? Isn't that six? I believe so. Um, that, that's right to me. I think Alan is, is Alan here? Alan will not be. I'm here virtually. Oh, you are. Yeah, I I can't be there physically. I'm sorry. I'm I'm out sick right now. Well, I'm um, hope you feel better, but I'm glad that you're joining virtually. Uh, I understood that you would not be. Online. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I also am not there physically. I'm getting yelled at by a one-year-old. Two one-year-olds, to be specific. So I'm just waiting for Tom to come on to the WebEx and we'll determine how to move forward.
Okay, so it seems like uh, folks were just in the wrong meeting room and they are working to uh, get switched over now. Hey guys, so we're just waiting for a couple other people to join on us. We were, they were in the wrong WebEx link. So give them a few seconds to switch over, all right? That's good. We're unmuted, and then I'm just going to let you guys know. I'm going to start the record button right now. Okay, you guys are live. Floor is yours, Derek. Were we able to get OHR? Yeah. Ah, they, okay. Sorry. Hello. Hello. All right. Fantastic. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, I know there was a little bit of confusion on the timing of things. Um, and um, thank you to Alan uh, for being present, even though he's a little under the weather. Um, I also, my, my mom is a little bit sick, so I apologize if I get interrupted by twins while I'm speaking. Um, as a reminder, wash your hands and wear your mask. It seems like it's going around. So, um, I will call this meeting to order. <clears throat> um, the tip workers coordinating council today is December the 2nd. Um, and let's have a roll call. Uh, Alan Karnofsky. 
Did you hear me, Jared? No, I didn't. Oh, but now sorry. I do. Present. Uh, Jonathan Cool. Present. Tracy Javier. Present. Uh, Zach Hoffman. Did he make it? Present. Oh, there you are in the back. Hey, Zach. Um, what am I missing here? Uh, our new uh, representative from eight OHR. Tell me your name. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'll have to see it in writing because I've got baby yelling at me. Um, are you present? Sorry. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my roster in front of me. I didn't miss anyone, did I? Is, uh, oh, um, uh, Jennifer McCahill, be present. Is Jennifer there? Jennifer is not here. Jennifer is not there. All right, great. Um, and uh, Larry. Mr. Villegas. It's running late. Okay, Jennifer is running late. Okay. Um, I believe we do have a quorum. We can start without her. Is that all right? With everyone else? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, great. Um, I will open now. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We do have. Uh... <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm going to open the meeting now for uh, public comments. Um, and in doing that, uh, I see we have a uh, guest joining us, Miss Fiedler. Uh, do you mind just coming off mute and introducing yourself? And uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Melinda Fiedler. I'm an organizer with DC Jobs with Justice. Um, worked a little bit with Tracy, and I'm working with some tips workers in DC. So very interested in observing and seeing what you guys have to, uh, what you guys are working on, how we can work together. Fantastic. Thank you again for joining us. Um, I'm opening now for public comment. Is there anyone uh, who would like to comment? I will take that as a no, there are no public comments. Um, let's, uh, um, I can't put in there. Okay, um, so our first item um, on the agenda, and I'm, I'm looking, sorry, I see the, the review of wages on the agenda. Um, I'm, just uh, I'll just go around the room. I I thought, even though our last meeting was um, unofficial, we agreed that uh, we had a pretty good handle on the wage cases and how uh, the process of investigation works. Um, I just want to go around and ask again if there's any comment or question about those wage cases, um, and if we can move forward beyond that. If I close that, well, if there are any questions. So there's no questions regarding the redacted cases, um, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Our next uh, item then, um, I would. So we are, I believe, getting to the point where um, we are going to start to have to make official uh, recommendations, whether those are procedural recommendations to DOES regarding uh, their processes on tip wage law or enforcing tip wage law, I should say. Um, and I guess I'm just sort of asking the question for myself, um, what, does it mean for the council to make 
an official recommendation um, that can be, I don't know, I guess reviewed by either the mayor or uh, the DC City Council. Uh, maybe Alan, this is a question for you, but I'm just throwing it out to the group. Sure. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't have the legislation in front of me, but I know that it does say, yes, uh, we, we, we as a council need to um, provide comments and uh, feedback on, on the Office of Wage Hours process and policies. Um, so I think, I think that my interpretation is we can set up that, that process um, ourselves. So whether it is maybe like a formal written recommendation from this, this group to, you know, the Department of Employment Services, um, I think that will suffice unless, you know, people have other, other uh, opinions. Just going around the room for discussion. Any thoughts? One thought, uh, Chairman. Um, I don't know how to say this without it sounding the way that it sounds, but I'm not sure the agency of which the policy recommendations will be given should necessarily have direct input in the process and way that we offer the suggestions of policy. Sorry, Zach, I don't, I'm not quite, a, quite sure I understand what you mean. I don't think it's here. Is their feed frozen for anyone else? Yeah, it's frozen for me. Shucks. But what are the recommendations? We haven't made any recommendations. We're in the process of discovering the avenues for which recommendations necessary and appropriate. Is there any way you all can move closer to the microphone? You can give a you can give a camera a little further. You really come closer. Yeah. Where is the microphone? It's on. It's on this. It's on, it's on the camera. Yeah. All right, make the launch and set up. Now, Charles. Jared, are you hearing us better? Much better. Okay, awesome. Uh, at what point did I lose you? <laughs> the beginning. Okay. <laughs> Fair Sorry. Uh, my comments were that the department or agency that will be receiving policy recommendations should, in my opinion, not have direct influence or direct impact on how the policy recommendations are made and how we make them and how they receive them. It's not, I believe, their responsibility to dictate to us how we make those policy recommendations. So if I understand, they shouldn't be a part of the recommendation, but they certainly will have an opportunity to comment on the receiving end 
to provide their thoughts on what they think of the recommendation. Input on reception certainly feels appropriate, but okay. making the recommendation should not Got be. Got it. So that that was. Uh, I don't know if I could fully hear it, uh, Zach. So, are you are you saying um, the the Office of Wage Hour should not have input in the the forming of this council's uh, recommendations back to, to them. Okay, so now I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, Alan, I, I think that's correct. That's what I understood Zach to be saying. Okay. Okay. So I think, I mean, uh, it could be, I could be wrong. Maybe it's not just this simple, but I think if, if we, in the process of either making recommendations and or figuring out how to make recommendations, um, we we could always just at, at any point of disagreement stop and put it to a vote by the members of the council. Um, I think that would um, I mean uh, I don't I don't think I need to explain more. I think if we just, if we all just voted on any point of disagreement, then that should work itself out. Do you disagree, Zach? Not necessarily. Okay. So, uh, okay. So I, I think that's um, Alan's initial thought that um, official written um, statements would be the format with which we would use. I agree on that. Um, I think in the process of deliberating about uh, our recommendations, if there's any objection, uh, any member of the council could request a vote. Those are two uh, actionable items that we, we all agree on, it seems. I agree. Cool. Yes. Great. Yeah. Um, is, are there any other thoughts on this topic of how and what uh, we should be recommending to wage hour? Mr. Chair, for me, um, my thoughts on recommendations would be just how to, because I, the last meeting we had, not the official meeting, but the meeting we had at the OES, um, we discussed, I guess, chapter 13 in the code, code 32, which was talking about um, how each business has to at least um, once a year put in, um, what is it called? Sorry, I'm blanking on everything, but like their training basically for um, sexual harassment and for wage law. So, but they're, and they have to turn in a certificate, but we don't know how they get to that certificate. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, which I'm assuming we'll kind of discuss. Um, I saw that there was something in the meetings for that. We can address that. Can I yeah. jump in? Yeah. Uh, uh, remember that we uh, reported that we built a, an internet friendly uh, online form that is going to be distributed. We already have a list of approximately 1,500 uh, businesses. Not all emails are working. So what we're doing is we're getting groups of hundreds to actually send them the information on um, documentation that they have to submit to OHR for the law regarding um, having a sexual harassment policy giving it to everybody and also having it in a, in a contiguous place where staff gather. And then they're also going to provide us with a copy of their, uh, any claim, not the result. Important to know that the law says the number of claims made to management and we can provide from, from that data, a copy to uh, 
uh, BOES. So if they have in their in their platform a click that they can do, BOES will be able to see if they really hit it through the documentation that we are going to give them. Mm -hmm. And then we are uh, preparing the first draft of the sexual harassment presentation mm -hmm. that is going to be given to the members of the working group for uh, feedback. And we hope that mid January it would be uh, laid out. Yes. Okay. So I, I just want to stop for one moment. Um, let's hold on to everything that you just said, Larry. Um, Tracy, the the items, the two items that you brought up, we're going to speak about in, I think it's probably the next item on the agenda. I just want to make sure we get this uh, squared away um, in terms of um, what our recommendations are going to look like. Um, my only final thought, if, if no one else has any other final thought, is um, to set for ourselves a timeline um, for when we can have at least one official recommendation um, published, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Um, personally, I would like to have something finished by March, for sure, um, and we can decide amongst ourselves what maybe the most, um, uh, uh, what's the word, approachable uh, item might be, but I do think that we should have um, to show that, you know, our council has been productive, a written item, an official uh, recommendation completed by March. Does anyone have any objections with at least the idea of setting a date uh, or at least, you know, a, a, a attempted date, maybe? Chair, this is Nin. I don't have objections, but I just want to offer up that, uh, at least from OHR's end, as Tracy was talking, and if Larry hasn't done this yet, what OHR will offer up is, I'm a visual person, like have everything in front of me, to have a table of what the law requires in one column, so you can have the code and what it requires, and the implementation that OHR has completed thus far, and what else is left to do. Would that be helpful to everybody to see? Yes, okay. Sir. So we'll have like a little cheat sheet so that you all can have that, digest it, have questions, recommendations. That sort of thing. So we'll send that what? around maybe in the next couple of weeks or mm -hmm. the yeah. which, which law are you that. referring to, or just just any that we're we're attempting to address? Sorry, I, I I didn't hear the first part, Chair. I said, which which law specific law are you referring to? Or are you just saying it's any law? OHR is responsible for <laughs> just just the part about the sexual harassment yeah. training and certification that Tracy was asking about. She was asking how businesses would obtain their certificates and provide the certificates. I think, like right. Tracy, yes. and how that would all come together and be collected and tracked. I think is your question. Yes. Right. So to respond to that, I was saying that for OHRs and with our responsibility to facilitate training, collect certificates, reports of you know, just, um, uh, sexual harassment claims and complaints, things like that, we're going to create sort of a one pager or two of like a cheat sheet that shows what OHR's responsibilities are under the law, what we've done to implement, and what is left to do, and the milestones and dates so that you guys can see as the council what recommendations you might have to the process to improve it, if any. That makes sense. Yes, that makes sense, and that is helpful. Yeah. So, <coughs> so OHR, will, OHR will offer up that cheat sheet, as I like to call it, um, by the end of December, so that the council and members of the council will have something visual to work with to create these recommendations. So Got just, it. but that is limited to OHR's part. I know the law is much more expansive, but for OHR's part regarding sexual harassment training and prevention and complaints, we'll have that information. Great. Um, do you think you could have that um, completed and disseminated before next month's meeting? Yeah, I was saying we, we would have it by the end of December. Great. Beautiful. 
Uh, just one last time, any objections to uh, March as a timeline? No. Fantastic. Um, so on that note, uh, I think what we were, um, I think trying to figure out, so there's, there's two pieces to the law that, um, uh, Tracy was speaking about, she referenced earlier, and, uh, we talked about with, uh, Mr. King is that the, the recommendation, or excuse me, the, um, requirement. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, the requirements are for uh, DOS, DOES to enforce the law on uh, businesses conducting sexual harassment training, but also training on um, wage law, wage theft, those sorts of things. So, Mr. I think I heard your voice, Mr. King. Are you there? Yes, Mr. King is here. Okay, great. Would you very briefly give that same sort of rundown that you gave to Tracy and I? Sure. And actually, um, hello everyone. I'm Mr. Daniel King. I'm deputy to Mr. Watts uh, as supervisor for the Office of Wage Hour. And today, I also brought our office paralegal who has recently joined the staff. Um, and we have been digesting, go ahead and pull up the presentation, just what the requirements are from the Tip Wage Workers Fairness Amendment Act. That's the same act that created this council, and as well as a number of different trainings that are required for businesses that have tip workers. So go ahead and start the presentation. Are we sharing the screen with the viewers on WebEx too? Could you see the, uh, the screen chair? Chair. No, I no, I cannot. You guys can see that, correct? Yes, we can Here, see that. Did you see it? Yes. All right, awesome. Just go ahead to the next slide. So what we want to do today is just present the facts on what those two training requirements were for the Tip Wage um, Fairness Amendment Act from 2018 and what we have received in funding to uh, make that happen. So I'm going to ask Leslie to go ahead and talk about uh, first the requirements for wage theft training, what that looks like. It also requires managers of tip employees to require an in person training on annual and requires employers to provide the opportunity for all of the tip workers to attend either an in person. Um, I'm sorry, I'm job. sorry to interrupt you. Um, we, you, you cut out right on the very first part of your uh, presentation. I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, so just before you go any further, do you mind just okay. uh, starting over? I will start over. So the wage theft uh, training law requires business owners or operators who employ tip workers to either attend an in-person or an online wage theft training on an annual basis. It also requires managers to attend 
and in-person training on an annual basis and requires employers to provide the opportunity to their tip workers to attend either an in-person or an online training on the wage theft laws. It also requires um, employers to provide certification of completion of training in compliance with this section by the 1231 of each year. And this is Mr. King, I just wanna interject and we highlighted that last line because that's the part that we actually receive funding for and we're creating a portal to receive those certifications. Um, now, in contrast, we're gonna show you what the training requirements are for sexual harassment and how robust and specific those requirements are. So go to the next slide. So the sexual harassment training law, it provides guidance for who's going to develop and provide the training. It outlines a specific schedule for attending training and providing certification of training to the Department of Employment Services. And it contains retention requirements for the certifications collected in fulfillment of all of the requirements. So like when, when you say uh, Department of Employment Services, the law, when it says the office, it means the office. Oh, right. right. Office. Thank office. you for calling for that. You can take over if you want. Well, <laughs> so we, we did a highlight in the middle. The mayor may delegate responsibilities to someone else under the mayor. And we are in arrangements with receiving the certifications from OHR after they've done the training. So that's how both agencies come into partnership. Yeah, we'll share. So it also goes on to next slide to outline the responsibilities of employers to provide a policy to the employees and also provides for a plan of reporting sexual harassment to the Office of Human Rights. So in contrast to the wage theft training. training law, it's much more specific and detailed for how each part of this operates and should be prepared. Okay, that's it, that's it. Very short presentation, sorry. And I had a question based on the fact that not everything was highlighted there. That is to be assumed that not every part of this law is received funding for the project. So anything that's highlighted is like specific. So from a DOES perspective, um, I'm not aware if OHR has separate funding for the creation of their training program. Yeah, we have funding. Okay. So I can only speak for our yep. team, obviously. And the funding received by DOES is only to collect certifications that training was done for wage theft and to select, uh, accept the certifications from OHR for the training that they received or completed. Able to ask the um, more funding needed for either or the council. That's okay. <laughs> I swear I'll swear I won't. <laughs> also, one question I do have is um, that the law says that at least one training has to be done yearly. So basically, it has to or either or wage theft or sexual harassment, but every both. Both. No, so <laughs> the wage theft training must be done annually, but the sexual harassment training is on a biannual basis. It has to be done every two years. Okay. It's like that we all know and we all want to <laughs> say it. And so, so that's. I think that's what this teaching would be helpful. Like, have like, you know, one will be. Sexual harassment training, the other will be wage theft training, have it all in one place so everybody can have all the information. I guess what's tripping me up though is because it says at least one training on requirement. So is there multiple? It's, it's just saying that you have to have the opportunity to take the training more than at least one time during okay. the year. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, managers have to take it every year, but they can invite their staff to take it if they so decide. 
but do they have to offer it? Like, I know it's no, they have to they offer have to it. Offer it. Okay. They have to offer them the opportunity at least once a year. And that's for both wage theft and no. sexual harassment. But it still oh. has to be offered for them. You have to start off with at least one, and then mm -hmm. after that, it's biannual for the sexual harassment. They at least start an out, which we haven't started. So there are different requirements. Yeah. I want to be clear, it's different requirements for wage theft than there is for sexual harassment. So we all, when you talk about it, you want to make sure you specify which training. Right. Okay. So then, uh, Mr. King, just uh, to make it uh, really clear again, what, what part of the um, law about wage theft training is missing, for lack of a better word. Well, so the question is, what part of the law is missing? It's, it just requires the owners to do it. It doesn't tell them how to do it, the specifics on what needs to be trained. Um, and then it says that they have to provide certification. So on the DOES side, we're creating a format or an electronic means for receiving that certification, but we don't have any process of telling them that yes, the training you offer is correct or how it should look. Um, we just receive a certification. Oh, the DOES is not designing the training. The law doesn't require us to. Actually, testify for for uh, before it became a law, and I got uh, copies of all the testimonies. It's probably like 400 pages, but I, I stopped at like page 150 because it gave me a good idea of what happened. Was that and this is just a thought? It appears that DOE could just create a video or a presentation that people could. Uh, see once a year because it seems that it was important for business owners and managers to know exactly what the requirements of the law is every year. They cannot say, oh, I forgot because it happened last year. But that would be a conversation with me. Uh, there is a lot of funding mechanism that yeah. the legal law. And, and again, the only requirement to us is to receive a certification. And that's why that's the only uh, funding, because that's the only requirement. Uh, so then my next question is, uh, does the Office of Human Rights conduct any wage theft training? <laughs> no, but you do conduct that training on sexual harassment, uh, and that's yeah. how you collaborate with uh, DOES in terms of they you conduct the training they collect the certification. Correct. But the Correct. certification has uh, been determined. The certification is a little tricky because I have read that part so many times. The certification that the OES, I mean, we can definitely give them what we have. It appears that there is a certification that they have received that they have reviewed every year the content of the wage uh, law, the requirements of the law, the uh, posting of the fact, the no fact sheet, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, my goodness, a sheet where it, where it reads all the rights and benefits like of every, like a fact sheet, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is, which I believe uh, Director Nin has had a conversation with the legal team at the OES to, to set up the language for the OES and the language for OHR. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about the universal posting? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so there is that third piece of this law. In addition to the training, um, the law mandates that we as the government, right, both DOES and OHR, create a universal poster that lists all of the rights uh, related to tip wage workers. So rights related to wage, rights related to anti-discrimination, mm -hmm. the Human Rights Act. And yes, I was in touch with DOES's um, 
general counsel's office to put that together. So right now it's sort of a bit of a standstill, but um, I think we'll get to it. Yep. We'll get to it. We had a good, good, I think I we had a good uh, draft going on. Yeah. This is not our final item um, to make sure that we include everything that DOE has, has jurisdiction over. So it's just like in plain English, instead of listing out just the laws itself, just explaining what those rights are. You know, instead of saying you have a right under the Human Rights Act, I don't know what that is, you would say you have a right to not get discriminated based on your sex, right? You have a right not to get harassed based on your sex, right? Um, so that sort of thing. Okay, yes, I understand that. But my, I guess my point was that um, there is no guidance on the training and no one's offering the training. You're offering the poster, but you're off and, and you're collaborating on the poster, but not on training. So it sounds like um, to me, a recommendation that we can make is for one, this law to be written out more uh, robustly, sort of like the way the law is written out about uh, sexual harassment. Um, and then for there to be funding provided for someone to conduct this training. Um, does Mr. King, you agree with those two statements? I have no opinion. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can't really give an opinion on this. Fair enough. Um, is is there anyone on the council that objects to the idea that the the way the statute the the statute written about uh wage training should be expanded in a more robust way very similar to the way it's the statute's written about uh sexual harassment training i agree with you yes yes everyone agrees any disagreement no disagreement. Fantastic. Um, is there anyone on the council that disagrees with the idea that we should look into recommending that that law be uh, written out more robustly? We should also recommend uh, funding to be provided to either OHR or DOES, whoever is most appropriate, so that that tra training can be conducted. Yes. So, Chair, I don't know if I heard you right, but the funding wouldn't be for OHR. OHR wouldn't have the knowledge to do wage. Uh, sure. Um, sorry. Yes. Yes. I asked you that earlier. I'm sorry. Yes. Great. Be for the um, yeah, DOES, or should it go through? I don't know, like for the training itself, go through like another nonprofit or something. That's what we're doing. Okay. We're I don't know. Designing the training, but yeah. So my my on. just strike my just strike OHR from the question that I asked. If that funding goes to DOS, D sorry. If we recommend that funding be provided, it should go. To DOES, in my opinion, I hope the council, the rest of the council, will agree with me. And then, whether it's uh, someone else, whether it's a nonprofit or an online, whatever, to do that training, that's fine. We can, um, what's the word, offer our opinion or our recommendation on that uh, later down the line. I don't have any objections, but I would like to, you know, see the, the written version of this before signing off. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we will collaborate on, hopefully, if we all agree. And it sounds like we do. Um, so actually, John, I was Jonathan. I was going to come to you because um, to your knowledge, uh, and I don't know if Jennifer made it. But did she make it? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello. I, you're not in the camera, so. Uh, oh, hello. Um, to so for either one of you, um, what 
what sort of so like for instance i know that when i get hired in a restaurant um either like maybe it's safe bars or maybe a restaurant like in a in a big corporation will have their own private company come up with uh sexual harassment training that is um compliant with whatever the local laws are to either of your knowledge is there such a training like say safe bars as an example um for wage theft and wage loss not my experience. Jared, I'm sorry. I, yes, I, need to go, I need to go back for a second because whatever you said just before we started this conversation about Ben, I'm completely lost in what you were saying. I'm sorry. I have no idea what it is you were suggesting earlier. You were cutting in and out and it wasn't making a lot of sense. Okay. So I'm just asking is does anyone know of any uh, training? on wage theft or wage laws. Chairman, I'm sorry. Before this current conversation we're having right now. Oh. Before, I was trying to get your attention. It wasn't picking me up on the mic. I'm sorry. Um, before that, most of what you said did not make a lot of sense to me, and I, I couldn't very clearly understand what you said. Okay. Um, let's, so Zach, it's actually in like this a uh, fairly circuitous, circuitous line of thinking that I have going on in my head. So if I can get the answer to this question and then I'll come back and connect it. Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Sorry <laughs> to be difficult, but my, my brain, it's, it's just how I go. <laughs> uh, so, but just, so no one can think of anything. Is that correct? I, I'm aware of anything, but um, I probably wouldn't be, to be honest. You wouldn't be what? Aware of it if it did exist. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, in my experience, the uh, companies just offer some sexual harassment training. That's I've never experienced. All right. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, I believe in 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 my conversations with places like. Um, DC Chamber of Commerce, um, uh, uh, Metropolitan Restaurant, yes, um, Restaurant Opportunity. Opportunity. There are a few of yeah. the of the uh, companies that represent uh, some of the biggest uh, restaurants or or businesses in DC. Um, some of their lawyers have actually come to um, some of our uh, meetings at OHR when we are designing the sexual harassment training, and I I am um, I can facilitate the conversation between us and some of them to see if they have that uh, uh, portion of the law or in general in their training uh, because they were very interested common certified trainers for harassment. Um, so they were the ones saying, you know, these are the regulations, this is what the law is asking, uh, what else can you give us? So I, 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 we have a meeting within the next like 10 or so days. I'm going to also send the invitation to this group so we can maybe have that conversation at that level. Um, but knowing that is in the, the DOES jurisdiction because it's all wages. And the Office of Wage Hour has participated in trainings and webinars. Um, most have been targeting employers, but there have been some organizations like the Mayor's Office of Nightlife that has done trainings where they invited workers to come online and hear information about all of the wage laws that we enforce. So maybe not just wage stuff, but every wage law, a quick overview. Same thing with ROC and other advocacy groups. They'll set up training um, and we go over just a synopsis of all the laws that we enforce. Um, even have done that recently this past year with, is Leo on the line? I'm trying to remember the name of the group. Um, there was a restaurant workers listening series and they were inviting workers from across the district to come listen in on a number of different topics 
from sexual harassment to wage theft. They had speakers come in from the attorney general's office, our office from OHR to discuss all the laws that we enforce. And then they provided back their comments and their questions of things that they were experiencing or if they wanted us to look at, you know, potentially doing random audits for certain districts or, or businesses um, and the type of issues that they were dealing with. So it's not specific to the criteria that the law requests because we just do an overview of our program. But those opportunities are happening around the district. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was not on mute that whole time. I apologize. Um, I'm just, I want to ask this one last time only because uh, we do have Melinda in the room. Uh, Melinda, to your knowledge, is either Jobs with Justice or any other organization that you can think of um, actively conducting training on uh, wage theft and or uh, tip, tip wage law? I know we've done um, like some little one off, you know, presentations and workshops, um, but I don't think we haven't been doing them proactively or, you know, up to whatever the certification standards are. I also think ROC might do some, but I also don't know if they are like a certificate program or just kind of a know your rights public information training. Great. That's helpful. So, um, um, I need a moment to think actually. Um, are there, let me, sorry. Chairman, I believe that yeah. the uh, entity that you were looking for was the Office of Planning Food Policy Council. Because I remember the OES and OHR participated already in some of their uh, uh, talks. Sorry, what? Uh, say, what's the name of the office again? Office of Planning, Food Policy Council. And they conducted talks on uh, wage law or tip wage law. Yes, we did it. Probably like at the end of July or so was the first meeting that we all participated. But they had a listening series yeah. for the workers where they brought in all of the issues and then they informed the agencies what information to give us. Is that what we spoke about when we came to the US? So, Mr. King, through DOES, do you have, is there any, um, not about tip wage, just any anything at all within DOES? DOES that um, trains and then certifies. Like, is there is there a platform for this sort of thing anywhere within DOES? Um, that's a good question. I'll have to follow up and provide some information on that. We have a number of, of programs, and I know that the agency also did a number of. Um, and maybe Alan, I don't know if he's still welcome to speak on this, but the agency opened their doors to the public and let them come in for a series of overview of programs uh, that DOES offers. So there, there are some things that the agency provides training on. Um, the certification piece is something new um, that's just being added uh, based on the amendments of the law. Uh, yeah, Daniel, you're right. I think uh, a lot of the certifications that are provided are via the actual program provider. It's, it's not, uh, you know, not DOES providing the certification, but once our training providers, they, they set up the training and they provide the certification. And Alan, can you give an example of a training provider? In, in the sense that you're speaking? Well, I'm thinking, you know, agency wide, we have various programs. So um, if somebody, if, a, if an individual comes to DOES to be in one of our training programs, um, like Project Empowerment or the Infrastructure Academy, we partner with 
um, community-based organizations or with DCIA, which is our infrastructure academy, um, like Pepco or Washington Gas, and they put on the training and they will provide the certification. Um, those are the things I'm thinking of off the top of my head, which I know these are not one for one comparisons to what we're trying to, to solve for here. No, I know, but I, I, I wanted to ask that because they, it still speaks to, um, what we need, right? So like, uh, if DOES is responsible for certifying, we need someone to be able to conduct training. So, um, I would suggest. Um, and opening this up to thoughts, questions, disagreements, um, that we next, uh, before our next meeting, try our best to identify, um, community based organizations in DC that could or would be equipped to conduct this sort of training. Um, and whether that's uh, employee rights groups like Jobs with Justice or Rock, whether that's the Restaurant Association or the Hotel Association, um, which is, uh, well, brings me to another thing. Um, and come up with a list of organizations that we may be able to identify uh, and then therefore recommend as uh, a certifiable provider of this sort of training. I rambled a little bit, but I hope that was clear. Um, Jared, is there any uh, specific people you want on the council to take that on? You can do it. That's yeah, so I think uh, definitely Tracy, Zach, and I will um, work together on it. Um, but again, whether that's, um, I, I'm, I guess I'm asking everyone. Um, from, like I said, from whether it's the employee side or the business side, um, we have representation. So I, I'm asking everyone to uh, identify, I don't know, I don't wanna make it like a homework assignment and say identified two possible organizations, but it's sort of like that. And then if we identify any, then we can share them with you. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, yeah. So let's um, try to make it more concrete. Let's say um, uh, we should we should come up with um, at least two to three um, quote unquote employee rights organizations. Um, we should come up with at least two to three, uh, quote unquote, business rights organizations, whether they're restaurant specific or not. I don't think, well, no, they should be restaurant specific. Um, and then maybe room for like two to three wild cards. Um, if anybody it's has Germany. any out of the box ideas. Yes. Uh, so there are approximately 2000 businesses in DC. Um, and if we add to that number of employees, we are easily talking about 30,000 people. That's why it has become a, a huge uh, endeavor to create the session harassment training. They're looking for something similar for um, the, the wage law and, and this particular law thinks that they want expand our horizons a little more. Uh, we can begin uh, smaller uh, because it is a lot. And unless we create a video that people can, you know, like this one that we just did on, on um, 
cybersecurity that has a way for people to know that people are actually doing it. Um, it, it we would need a lot of manpower and weapon power and day power, all kinds. Of Yes, I understand. Um, but if if the law says that the training has to be conducted and DOES has to be able to certify it, um, I mean, what what are they going to certify? You know what I mean, cool. even if we were to come up with like say a video, but that would be easier. Like I know that there is a law that says that if like the hardship law or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we get someone that will cite that to do the training if it's going to be basically online? So I guess that's the part we're trying to figure out. It's not a form of recommendation. It's the hardship mm -hmm. law. Technically, you can just go to the library. Or your provider for I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself with this question. Um, obviously, anyone can do a training. We probably all sat through trainings at some point in our lives where we just don't retain any information. So I guess my question would be, is it possible? I don't know with the law, like to have not an exam per se, but to mm -hmm. for them to show that they understood the information. Yeah, so the type of training Larry was referencing with our cybersecurity, there's like a little quiz at the end. Uh -huh. Nothing is foolproof, but it helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And they can get a certificate like if you, you know, like Cybersecurity, you have to get, I think, 80% to pass or something like that. So you can create five questions and have a pass fail rate. And it also, it doesn't have like automatically play. You gotta click to go to the next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that at least this second part, um, we table um, and look at at uh, future meetings. Um, at the very least, like I said, I want to go back to uh, being able to have something concrete by March. Um, and so, even if that is a written recommendation that that says um, this this statute on wage law is unclear. Um, and it's, um, I don't know, uh, not finished, um, that, that we can have, um, and, and then of course, like, uh, Jonathan said, we write that out in a way that is, um, agreeable amongst everyone in the council. Um, I think that that's something that we can accomplish, um, in the next two to three months. So, um, why don't we um, continue thinking about this? Um, and I'm I'm mostly moving to wrap up because we're coming close to our ninety minutes. Um, why don't we continue to think about that in terms of um, identifying possible training partners? Uh, but let's at least agree to. Um, start to work on uh, a written recommendation for expanding this law. Is that any disagreements on that? No. 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 All right, great. Um, if it's all right, um, either with Mr. King is, I didn't, I, I haven't heard him, so I assume that Mr. Watts is not present. He's not. Okay. Um, between, uh, Tracy, Zach and I, um, certainly, but we will send out an invite, 
um, to anyone else on the council. I would like to have another meeting with uh, Mr. King and or Mr. Watts and whoever in your, on your staff you deem appropriate um, to uh, iron some of that out. Um, and then we will get back to you all um, with uh, starting to work on language. Um, so Tom, if I can have you help me uh, get a schedule uh, for at the very least, um, Tom, Zach, and, or excuse me, uh, Tracy, Zach, and I, and then have that uh, meeting invite sent out to the rest of the council as well. Tom's not here. Tom's not here. Where did Tom go? Tom was here. She she had to step out. Oh my god. Okay, great. You got to know well, I will we're gonna include Alan as well. Uh yes, yes, please. <clears throat> like to have this meeting. I didn't I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. This is Cherie Price on um, with the Office of Wage Hour. Well. Yes. I'm asking if there is a, um, do you know exactly when you'd like to have this meeting? Prior to your end or to kick off the new year? Ooh. Uh, no, before the new year, certainly. Um, I, I, within the next 14 days. Got it. Great. Okay. Um, any last thoughts? No thoughts? Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, I know that, again, this was um, uh, a little confusing with the time and uh, the location and everything else. But thank you for your flexibility. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you for your attendance, even more so. Um, I look forward to speaking with you all. Uh, we we will send out also a notice about uh, the date for the next meeting because obviously a month from now we'll be right at or around New Year's. Um, and so that could be that that's going to be tricky. So um, let's let's just look forward to an email about the date for the next meeting uh, by the end of next week. Fantastic. Thank you again. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much and have a great <laughs> afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, can we get the presentation, Sam?